Welcome everyone to Shriners Hospitals for Children Facebook Live. I'm Beth Demas, Regional Public Relations Director for Shriners Hospitals for Children. I'm joined today by Dr. Amir Samdani, the Chief of Surgery for the Philadelphia Shriners Hospitals for Children. Welcome, Dr. Samdani. Thank you, Beth. So, today, we're going to talk about scoliosis, a condition that impacts over six million people in the United States and millions more worldwide. We're also going to discuss the importance of routine screenings and how Shriners Hospitals for Children is helping parents to ensure that their child is screened uh, with their back to school routine. So we encourage all of you out there to ask us questions by commenting below. Our colleague Stephanie is here with us and she'll be monitoring your comments and relaying them back to us. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks so much. I'm so excited to get to get to say hi to our friends out there, Mike and B, Bob. Hey, Mary Beth. So this is going to be a lot of fun, and we're going to learn a lot today. Dr. Sam Donnie, let's start out talking a lot about scoliosis, and, and this is your area of expertise. So what is scoliosis? So, you know, scoliosis is a curvature in the back that can cause pain. It can... Uh, lead to a loss of uh, mobility, and if it's left untreated, it can actually cause very serious health problems, including uh, affecting one's breathing and even their heart if it gets very severe. About what age um, in a child would this show up? Yeah, so the type of scoliosis that we're talking about is termed adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. And that's the most common type. And generally, that occurs after the age of 10 years old. It typically is most crucial to follow children while they're rapidly growing. And most kids are done growing anywhere around 15 or 16 years of age. Okay. So... When I think it would be important for families to know what is the cause of scoliosis. Yeah, so, you know, we still haven't figured that out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can tell you, we have been trying. So that's where the term idiopathic comes in. We don't know what causes it. But we do know that uh, genetics, a family history, plays a very crucial role. Several studies done way back, dating back into the 60s and 70s, and even several newer studies have shown that if you have scoliosis, there's a good chance that your child may get scoliosis. Let's talk a little bit about how scoliosis is diagnosed. Yeah, so the diagnosis of scoliosis is really uh, based on two different things. First is how the child looks physically. And family members and clinicians will notice that there's some asymmetry in the child's body. One side looks different than the other. This could mean maybe one shoulder is higher than the other particularly in the summer months and when kids are in their bathing suits, parents will notice, you know, I noticed that their body shifts over to the side and I didn't really notice that before. When you see those physical signs of a difference from one side of the body to the other, then an x-ray will confirm the diagnosis of scoliosis. A curvature greater than 10 degrees defines scoliosis. So I remember being screened for scoliosis in school and when my children were screened in school. So um, why does scoliosis sometimes go undetected during that critical period in adolescence? Yeah, so I think you hit it right on the head. It's the screening process. So, you know, in the past, um, there was much more routine school screenings and more recently, secondary to budgetary constraints and other factors, it's not very consistently performed in schools. This can vary from state to state, whether or not you even have a school screening program. And even if a school screening program is in place, uh, they may not do it uh, as regularly as required to really screen for scoliosis. So as I mentioned earlier, we know that the highest risk time points are when children are growing rapidly between ages 10 to 15. At that time period, they need to have their backs checked on a yearly basis. In school, they may only get, get it checked once and uh, may not have enough checks. And then secondly, Beth, it's um, you know pediatricians. Obviously, pediatricians can go ahead and check for scoliosis, 
But during the ages of 10 to 15 years of age, these kids are not really going to their pediatricians that often because vaccines are not as commonly uh, given at this age and kids are generally healthy. So once a child uh, family receives that diagnosis of scoliosis, what kind of treatment options are available for them? Yeah, so the key with respect to treatment options is detecting it early because you want to have the full spectrum of treatment options available. And if it gets picked up really late, then you're gonna be limited. So if it's picked up early, your uh, physician may just say, listen, we're just going to watch you, just uh, on routine follow-ups, either clinically or with x-ray. For really mild curves, we may recommend uh, scoliosis-specific exercises. And then curves that are a little bit larger than that may be very amenable to bracing. I can tell you, for in the last 20 years, we've learned a lot about how effective bracing can be, and we've modified our bracing to make it very amenable for kids to wear the brace. But of course, if the scoliosis is not detected until much later, and it's in a severe form, then surgery may be the only option. So one of the benefits of Shriners Hospitals for Children is that all these options are under one roof. And um, could you tell me a little bit more about the comprehensive care at Shriners? Yeah, so Shriners Hospitals for Children is a recognized leader in pediatric orthopedic care. We have 22 hospitals in North America. And with respect to scoliosis treatment, you can get all those treatment options that I spoke about, whether it's follow-up with low-dose radiation, whether it's scoliosis-specific exercises, bracing, or surgery, they're all under the umbrella of one roof and or one hospital. And all of that care is provided regardless of a family's ability to pay. I think that um, it would be great to expand a little bit, too, on the fact that we're very fortunate to have pediatric orthotics and prosthetic services within our facilities. And would you mind um, talking a little bit more about how they absolutely. work with the leader of the spine teams? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that is a critical point in uh, being able to effectively manage a child with scoliosis. You know, our government spent $10 million on an NIH-funded trial that has shown that if you're able to get a child to wear a brace, chances are you're going to be able to stop a progression of that curvature. But how do you get a child to wear a brace? Well, if it's uncomfortable, they're not apt to wear it. At Shriners, when the physician sees the child and looks at the brace and feels that the brace needs an adjustment, guess what? They walk right down the hall and our world-class orthotist will make the adjustment and discuss it with the physician to really make sure that everybody's on the right page in a quick, efficient manner, have that brace adjusted. In addition, we're very lucky. We have orthotists that will do whatever it takes to get your, your child to wear the brace because we know that bracing is only going to work if we can get your child to wear it. They may have the braces colored in a certain pattern that the child picks or have uh, other diagrams on it or have it signed so we can really encourage them to wear it as much as possible. Well, we're really lucky that we have folks that focus on the child like that. I think now might be a good time for us to go to Stephanie and uh, take a couple questions from our viewers. Hey, so we have lots of questions coming in. Thanks to everybody that's joining us in these conversations. And, you know, one of the ones that sticks out um, really highly is, um, you know, the, talk, the fact that people are wondering about moderate curves and, um, you know, how to keep an eye on that as, they've going, as they're going through. Absolutely. So, you know, the moderate uh, curvature is a curve that probably isn't amenable to just uh, being watched it probably needs more than just exercises, and those are the curves that I think bracing is very, very good for. So how do we determine you know, what type of brace and how long to put the child in a brace? So that obviously is going to be tailored individually for your child, and we will do what it takes to make sure that we can encourage compliance, because we know that if we can get your child to wear that brace, chances are that we'll be able to keep that curvature in check and as that child gets older and is once done growing, i.e. reaches a point where uh, they're not growing as rapidly and that curvature is still moderate, then chances are it's not going to bother them as they go into adulthood. How about some other questions from our audience, Steph? 
So before we jump into the most asked, which is how are they able to get the Spine Screen app, one of the questions um, a couple people have gone through and talked about is how they make sure that their pediatricians are actually screening their kids. I think uh, we've had quite a few comments about how um, people are saying that they definitely make sure their pediatrician is looking at their kids for their spines. And uh, so that's great, you know, we need that um, to go in tandem. And so I guess let's tell everybody how you can actually get the Spine Screen app. Yeah. Well, we want to talk about how Shriners Hospitals is helping parents make sure that their children are screened routinely, and that's going to be part of that. So, Yeah. So, you know, our Spine Screen app is um, available free on the Apple App Store and Google Play. But before I go into how one obtains it, I just want to give a little bit of background as to what drove us to really develop the app. So, you know, what we were seeing were we were seeing many children come to our clinics with really severe curvatures. And at that point, bracing is not going to help, exercise is not going to help. And really one of the only options that may be uh, left is surgery. So our goal was let's see how can we have families really uh, take control of their child's spine so we can catch these curves at a much earlier time point. And that was our impetus for developing the Spine Screen app. And what we did was we took clinicians, we took software developers, and we took family members to develop a free, easy to use, reliable app that can be downloaded off of uh, the Apple App Store and Google Play. Talk a little bit about the function of Spine Screen and um, that it, you know, I know it checks for the preliminary signs and how important that is early on to catch it. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you, for Beth, for bringing that up because, of course, an app is not meant to replace a healthcare professional. Our main purpose with the app is to screen a child for the potential for scoliosis. We want parents, especially right now, we're in August, I know my kids are now gearing up uh, for school in a couple of weeks, we want parents to make this app a part of their routine annual back to school screening. The app will be utilized to help detect or identify those children that may have scoliosis. If it does identify such a child, we recommend referral to your local orthopedist. And of course, if there's a Shriners Hospitals nearby, you can get the entire uh, treatment options under one roof. Mm -hmm. And using that as part of the back to school routine, they could always schedule a calendar reminder for themselves mm -hmm. for an annual screening because, you know, one of the things that came up before is it a one time use kind of app? Yeah. And really, how could it be used over and over is by reminding yourself to, to do it at back to school yeah. time. You know, Beth, and that was a really important feature was to make sure, I mean, we have busy lives. Parents are busy running around doing a lot of different things. And it was really important for us to incorporate that feature, i.e. the app will set an annual reminder. And we want it to really coincide with, uh, with back to school. And we do have a place where else you could get more information. And that's our website. Yep, uh, ShrinersHospitalsForChildren.org backslash scoliosis. And I think when folks go there, too, they'll get to see a lot more interesting stories of our patients that have had success with their scoliosis treatment. So, Stephanie, where are we at now? What do our viewers uh, you know think what? about the spine screen? <laughs> They are super excited about it. One of the questions that we keep uh, that keeps coming through the feed, and listen, we appreciate the questions, so keep them flowing. Um, is why isn't this started at started to be checked at birth? Um, a lot of people are saying at age one, my child was diagnosed. Um, there's other people that have chimed in and say this should be really a part of the routine starting even younger. So, can you touch base on um, early onset scoliosis? Absolutely. And, you know, our focus today was to start with the most common type of scoliosis, which is adolescent idiopathic scoliosis. Early onset scoliosis is critical, but it is very different. There's a lot of different causes. For example, early onset scoliosis can have a congenital basis or a neuromuscular basis. There's some patients that may still have an idiopathic basis. Can this app be utilized for those patients? Of course it can. But we wanted to start with the most common uh, form of scoliosis, which is adolescent idiopathic. How about any other questions, Steph? You know, another question that's coming through is about uh, both my daughters, um, that there's a couple comments about both siblings having scoliosis and being watched with their pediatricians. So um, is that something else that people with scoliosis, it often runs in families? 
Absolutely. So, you know, we call it idiopathic scoliosis, but we recognize that genetics plays a big role in it. So if a mother has scoliosis, there's a good chance that her daughter may have scoliosis. And studies have shown that if there's twins, that there's, if one twin has it, there may be up to a 70% chance that the other twin may have it. And again, it just goes back to one size does not fit all. There are certain families where there's a very strong family history. You know, an aunt or a grandmother, someone in the family may have even had surgery for scoliosis. Those families need to be followed even more regularly because we know, pick it up early, you have a lot of different treatment options. Okay. So how about a few more questions? Another question that we are being asked about scoliosis and special needs, um, uh, children that have special needs, and is there something that they should be aware of with scoliosis and um, children that might also have some other issues going on? Absolutely. Great question. And uh, all children are at risk for developing uh, scoliosis. The key thing is you want to make sure that your child is evaluated regularly. And that evaluation is really going to be done by a healthcare professional. But if you're concerned about checking your, backs, your child's back and you want to take control of whether or not the possibility exists of your child having scoliosis, utilize the app. Go to your healthcare professional. Tell them, listen, I downloaded the app and I'm concerned. Uh, now there's a lot of low-dose radiation uh, x-rays that are available. And a quick x-ray can really give a lot of information. So this truly is not a medical device. It's more of a screening tool for the families to use. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a screening tool. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, people really want to know some more details about the Spine Screen app and where they can find it, how they can get it. Is there a reminder uh, to be set within the app? So I think that's um, something that would, uh, the viewers would love to hear about. Absolutely. So early detection is key. You can download the Spine Screen app off of the Apple App Store or Google Play. It's really simple to use. There's step-by-step -step instructions in the app that will show you. Essentially, once the app is downloaded, you slide it down your child's back. It gives you an indication if there's a potential for scoliosis. Uh, and it also allows you to set an annual reminder to make sure that it's not just done once. And like I stated earlier, we have to make sure it's done at least annually while a child is growing. Well, that's great information. So we want to go ahead and thank our audience for tuning in today. We're really excited to, you know, provide this information. I want to thank Stephanie for monitoring social media and, and you know, letting us know about all your questions and really thank Dr. Sam Donnie for um, sharing his expertise on this very important topic. So we have one more thing, Stephanie, that you'd like to talk about? Absolutely. We need to make sure that people realize that they can get this app in the um, Apple iTunes store and also on the Google Play store. So go ahead and search Spine Screen app to go ahead and download now. Well, we thank you all again for being here today. The other place you can go for more information is to ShrinersHospitalsForChildren.org backslash scoliosis. So thank you all again, and we are really grateful that you came in, and we appreciate you being here today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yep.